Hello everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to the third episode of Insta Shots. My name is Sushma and I'm the people partner here at Log9. In our previous episode, you have heard our leaders Pankaj and Raman decode our culture and talk about our culture nineisms. They spoke in great detail about how to build a workplace that empowers individuals to take decisions and to take accountability. They also spoke about being inclusive and inclusive not just in terms of different demographies but also inclusive in terms of different thought processes. Today we are here to talk about a very interesting and fascinating topic women in STEM. STEM stands for science, technology, engineering and mathematics and women in STEM this phrase has come to represent women who are taking strides in traditionally male dominated areas. Over time women have taken great strides to enter the STEM fields and to pursue careers here as well. Yet even though the percentage of women workforce in India is about 47%, the percentage of women in terms of uh, scientists, researchers and engineers is just about 14% as per an article by Economic Times. While this figure is a considerable improvement from the past, we still have a long way to go to achieve equity and equality. But before we progress further and discuss about this topic let us take a quick 2 to 3 minutes recap to go through our previous episode where pankaj and raman have talked about this i think uh, the effort is threefold uh, first of all i think there is a very uh, uh, strong focus on changing the mindset uh, changing uh, the culture and changing the process and if you look at a mindset change uh, the nihilism of being inclusive helps us realize that uh, a different point of view than yours is something which will eventually help us succeed uh, you know for example if you take a diversity use case you know we have somebody in our manufacturing associate who is actually leading a team of about 180 people who is a supervisor of supervisors now would you in a in some sense you know look at a woman handling that kind of a responsibility no but we have that happening at log9 today because we truly feel that if you really empower you know people by looking just beyond gender there is a tremendous amount of opportunity that can get unlocked i think uh, uh, very gongo about the fact that you know we are increasing our diversity pool uh, it's you know 50% of the world population uh, which is the women population you know you look at such brilliance awaiting to be tapped into and i think it's an opportunity whenever uh, you know we get somebody uh, uh, who's done engineering being a girl or a woman to have an opportunity to work with them uh, you know personally i've observed that uh, that diversity what it brings is a very different point of view onto a problem solving and uh, uh, it's just been amazing that as we are finding more and more talented women to come and work for us that just the culture the richness of the conversations uh, simple things the aesthetics of the office <laughs> everything takes you know takes the right turn uh, i think it's it's a blessing to have as much as diversity as possible and uh, very strongly proponent of the fact that uh, you know we should joke ourselves that we are the mechanical department of <laughs> startups all boys college all boys school and all boys company but it's great to see that you know women have gone ahead done their btechs mtechs uh, we do find a lot of women to, who apply to us who have worked in fundamental sciences for example material science we have few from purely from their phd and postdoc days that have done material science and chemistry work so i think the diversity is very great but also the talent that they bring to us is something that is phenomenal so i think it's an opportunity and we continue to look out for the for great candidates who bring such you know different point of view and different way of looking at life for us welcome back as a demography women are often underrepresented in the field of stem however through today's episode we aim to provide girls and women with a few role models to inspire their interests and to pursue their careers in this space i am joined today by three of my incredible women colleagues amulya Chaitra and Varnika. Uh, I would like to start off, you know, I'd like our panelists to quickly introduce themselves with uh, their name, their designation, and a couple of lines about maybe their work, what is their passion, etc. Amulya, why don't we start off with you first? Sure, sure. 
Oh, uh, hello everyone. I'm Amulya, a log niner, a v niner, and I head the people operations for log nine. In my role, I believe in creating the most happiest and engaging workforce at log nine, so that we can help pioneer responsible energy. Uh, on a personal side, I am a mom, uh, a traveler by enthusiasm, traveled 30 plus countries, and I am very passionate about learning from people and places. That's a little bit about me. Wow. Uh, so uh, I'm Varnika. I'm working here as a senior research associate. Uh, it's been a couple of months for me now in Log9. And uh, I have uh, experience in uh, graphene technology. That's where my PhD is specialized in. And um, so altogether, I have around two years of industrial experience after my PhD. Um, on personal front, in my free time, I like to paint. Uh, acrylic, freehand painting is uh, what I enjoy the most. Yeah. Wow, that's great. And Chaitra, what about you? Yeah, I'm uh, working here as a scientist in R&D department. I have my PhD in chemistry. I joined Log9 soon after my PhD. So it's been like uh, more than two years I've been here in Log9. It was a very good experience overall. So which a couple of them I'll be sharing through the conversation. And uh, like uh, Amulya has loves traveling, Vernika loves painting. But in my free time, I just want to take some rest and sleep. <laughs> That's all. You know, sleep is very important. I, you know, though, even during weekends, I also want to sleep. <laughs> but sometimes there's no time to sleep as well, though, right? True. Yeah. But thank you all for joining here today. And, you know, it's great to have, like, this fascinating conversation with you. Uh, one interesting fact that I know about the two of you is both of you changed your careers or changed your course midway through your education. You know, you started off in some other field and then you, you know, uh, chose to excel in a completely different field. And I think that is something that I want to explore more about. And in due course of the conversation, I'd like to, you know, bring up that fact. Uh, but diving directly deep into our conversation, uh, why don't we start with, uh, you know, you guys just talking a little bit about uh, your day here at Log9. How does it start and what do you do here typically? Um. Well, that's a very good question to begin with, of course. Uh, for me, well, it starts with the coffee. I energize myself for the rest of the day for uh, for me to come ahead. And um, so the day in log nine for me is definitely very uh, well planned, structured and balanced at the same time. Uh, because uh, I as an individual and also as a team member at log nine, I believe that, uh, you know, pre planning a day uh, definitely helps you make the day more productive and uh, you manage time really well. So yeah, uh, and as I mentioned that, you know, my work is um, <clears throat> based on graphene technologies. So definitely my work, my day is revolving around that black powder. Yeah, that's uh, for sure. And uh, another, uh, apart from doing the experiments, regular experiments in the lab, uh, what takes my most of the day are the discussions. Uh, these discussions are uh, in the team with my manager and also across the team members. So discussions are basically about the, you know, ongoing status of the work. We have some challenges and, you know, obviously the solutions to overcome those. And uh, cross team discussions also help me a lot because, you know, sometimes you and when you are stuck up in a problem and you know there is a person in another team, you know, you can uh, help you give a good direction to your work. So that kinds of really help me. And towards the evening, um, you know, I wind up my work with um, my experiments and I wind up all the experiments. And uh, um, so one thing I would like to mention is, you know, um, mostly I see if I say uh, my day at log nine, it's usually I complete my work in a very peaceful manner, you know, uh, because thanks to the flexible timings we have here, uh, you know, uh, that helps me uh, take up all my respons responsibilities well back home and also at the workplace. So yeah, that's my work day at log nine. That's nice. So it's nice to start with a coffee and take in all the energy you need for the rest of the day. Okay, my day in Log9 starts uh, with a uh, very quick chat among the team to understand uh, what, uh, how we go for the rest of the day. And it also helps us to understand if there is any task which was uh, not completed and which is carry forward for the next day. So it 
that uh, will give you an overall idea of what are the things to be done for the day and what is the duration each one takes for so that we can plan accordingly and during our discussion too uh, each one pops up with new ideas so we do think that okay if these ideas work better we can prioritize that way uh, so this is the first thing that i do as soon as i come and the next one is just have a, a quick check with your emails and if there is any update meetings that has to be given to your managers so that uh, you can you morning you're fresh you can prepare for your preparations uh, presentations well in advance too and after that is my favorite job getting into the laboratory to do the work that you have planned for the day mostly it involves preparation of electrode materials and making batteries cells and uh, studying their performance so this is where we uh, put in most of our energy and time so that uh, we just get to know understand deeper like is it going the way we have planned or if not like how do we go to a direction where we get our expected output so this is when we put more of our time to get into the literature and study patents so it will help us to understand like where we are heading to is it right direction sometimes it does give us a way new thought process too so these are the things that we uh, that i do routinely throughout the day you know what one thing which i have seen as a common point between both uh, your answers is that planning right planning your day becomes like extremely important and there's a proverb as well like an hour of planning can save you 10 hours of doing right but uh, sometimes no matter how well planned your schedule is and you know how thoughtful and mindful you are when you have planned it there still comes some ad hoc work requirements uh, you know which tends to take things in a disarray so what do you do in such cases then yeah i uh, like after a couple of days i did understand that these things will come up so i made up my mind and uh, maybe uh, an hour or two is being devoted only for that work so when the tasks is assigned if i am able to understand which is prioritized i devote my time for that or if there are multiple things i do sit with my manager and take his suggestions so that it will be uh, helpful for me to focus which one needs that done first and eventually complete the rest too i think that is helping me wow so you're actually planning your day and you're keeping aside some time for ad hoc requirements i think that is something that even i should start doing in my schedule now you know that's a very good uh, suggestion now at the start of our discussion we did talk about a little bit about the low percentage of women in stem right i just wanted to explore a little bit more about that and uh, so uh, varnika have you experienced any challenges to being a woman in stem and uh, you know if yes then what did you do to overcome it okay <clears throat> so firstly i would like to begin with is uh, you know science and technology is a domain which is you know of utmost power and it's very empowering at the same time you know to be a part of it um so this kind of uh, thought process was already there in my family and my family already knew that you know i have my inclination towards science and technology and my career is going to be in that direction after i complete my studies so uh, yeah for that encouragement was always there for example my mother who herself has a very excellent uh, scientific temperament um she always insisted me on having a doctoral degree first of all and always she encouraged me about you know um putting my skills into best use um she always used to say that you know uh, whatever um, utilizes you the best you should be in that field so i think that's how i landed up in in the industrial sector and uh, so yeah encouragement was al always there but you know i have few friends colleagues who have had a tough time during their research studies and uh, <clears throat> they had same things you know uh, when we are uh, doing our uh, doctoral uh, studies uh, we generally t um, tend to hit our late 20s for example and uh, you know marriage is always on parents mind that's not it becomes uh difficult to get married during the course of phd but some of my friends did and uh, you know they had uh, they were sailing in two boats now you know for any women it's both the things are equally important family as well as their career but you know unfortunately they had to quit their careers and you know hold back their responsibilities back home 
so i just want to say that you know that encouragement is very important at that particular point be it be your wife your daughter your daughter in law it's very important to push her at that time because you know the glory uh, she has uh, after completing her studies will eventually come back to the family as well so it's very important at that point to encourage uh, women and um, also i know of uh, a government scheme a very important government scheme that has been running uh, that's called women scientist scheme so it allows you and it encourages women after having a doctoral degree to pursue their research uh, uh, you know uh, studies after uh, they have completed their phd and uh, even if you have a gap of let's say two or three years it kinds of help you to get that grant and it's about a grant of three years and uh, you know that's very encouraging from a government as well so yeah you know that's uh, it's good to see that there are government uh, programs as well which encourage women to actually uh, return back to the field right and to pursue a profession or maybe further studies as well and it's very encouraging and heartening to see that even our government is you know stepping up in this area and uh, chaita is there something that you know you would like to add here and talk maybe talk about if any you faced to what uh, varnika already stated i have the similar experience i haven't faced any challenges personally but i would like to add a few points which i feel is very important uh, as she stated family support is very important no matter what career you choose or whichever pathway you go through and another important thing is the work environment because you are stepping out uh, into an office or a factory and your work culture is very very important if the work culture is healthy only in that so you will be able to give out the best from you i think everybody will agree on it so here in logna and i have been for 2 years what i have noticed here is uh, the managers are uh, encouraging and the opportunities given here are equal to everybody there is no bias so that is when uh, you are uh, challenged even more mm. and you are motivated to give the best out of you that is what i like here and one more thing what varnika already stated is the flexible timing so there is no constraint like you have to be in office at 9 or so this gives you a freedom to plan your day because uh, and it is also based on the trust that they give you a flexible timings so you can uh, work in the pace you like plan your work finish it in the time that you are comfortable to and also the team here is uh, equally supportive because as in r and d we know some processes run 24 by 7 or Uh, some person's attention might be required or physical presence might be required during the night so that time uh, there are team uh, members who voluntarily come out and extend their support uh, so that time uh, you see such a very uh, supportive team which is growing and where you are also growing it just pushes you harder just to add to uh, what varnika and chaitra just spoke about uh, i think what i hear as a common thread is uh, three aspects support encouragement empowerment right uh, be it inside an organization or outside uh, in the industry as well and i'm glad to understand and share that as log9 we are an equal opportunity employer and we are out here opening our gates uh, welcoming uh, people young old uh, people from different geographies uh, folks who bring in various thought processes challenging as well and perspectives that are very diverse in nature so what what binds us together is that common goal of uh, bringing in innovations uh, that can make our planet more sustainable and as all of us say we belong to tribes i think that's where we take a common identity and go for the final cause so it's actually good to see that uh, we have had an opportunity to experience it here and uh, hopefully we'll continue to see the same as we go by that gets better and better yeah i i kind of like i agree with you there we may be different people but end of the day what binds us together is our you know vision that we have right collective vision so uh, you know just uh, on this topic uh, my next question chaitra will be to you so we do not see many women who pursue uh, fields of stem right uh, what would be your suggestions or your advice that you would uh, want to give out there and Uh, to encourage women to actually pursue this or you know to encourage women uh, when they are following their passion okay 
uh, one thing is uh, beat any individual when we have a passion like from your ch- uh, like passion is very strong na right? it comes through you from your childhood so if you like something do it but uh, we all know that there will be obstacles there are lot of chances that we would want to quit that time instead of quitting maybe like uh, we can take a break as vernika said there are so many schemes like you can bounce back after a break don't give up bounce back and uh, everybody out there would be supportive so that is one thing that we all can uh, keep in mind and other than that uh, as i stated this was my first uh, job after my phd so it was a shift from career like uh, from academic into the uh, industry domain Uh, so initially i did find uh, some difficulties in adapting so i would just say some uh, things which i used to follow which might be helpful for others too uh, so when you have your team meetings or your monthly updates just prepare in advance for your meetings maybe jot down like what points you want to put front on the table because we are sitting in there to discuss ideas like hesitation would not help us grow nor the team nor the project will go up so we can put four our points uh, suppose if somebody interrupts we can politely wait for listen to that person and just don't lay back push back and give in your point maybe you can try to convince them uh, showing your scientific literature what you have or experimental data so when uh, people see that efforts they do respect it and that is how ideas pour in and uh, if you are uh, if you see your fellow colleagues or other uh, women who are hesitant to talk or uh, maybe that time we can uh, if we can also push them through like we can ask them what is your opinion about the idea do you think it is practical or mm-hmm. would you like to build up on the idea so that way when you support another person they also get encouraged and uh, when you encourage people and give them the credits for it na they get even more motivated i feel that things we can follow and it's easy to do also when chetra was speaking in fact sushma i was thinking of uh, uh, maya angelos quote where she happened to say that every time uh, a woman stands up for herself uh, without knowing it or without even claiming it she stands up for all the women right and i think those are the instances when she said don't give up speak up and be that voice because you have that passion so just fuel it and uh, i think what is also more important is that each one of us uh, in our daily lives again in an organization or outside have multiple opportunities to be that sponsor uh, to put in that good word uh, to talk about what a certain person has done uh, be it in closed conference rooms or over a coffee chat conversation so i think uh, that's where we come together as allies uh, talking for each other supporting each other encouraging each other and fixing each other's crowns without letting the world know it was broken so wow you know i mean you have made some very powerful uh, statements but definitely uh, maya angelo is someone who is an inspiration you know to all of us right her book uh, her aut- autobiography rather which is i know why the caged bird sings it's actually a testament to the fact that you know resilience is required or resilience is needed you know in in all times and especially in these extraordinary times that we are living in when we are trying to change the whole world right and uh, vanika so my question to you is similar to the one that i asked uh, chaitra as well what would be your suggestions to a student who is currently pursuing uh, her graduate or post graduate degree and uh, what what should they be doing you know and uh, any advice for the future researchers who are out there um okay so um firstly i would uh, try, uh, repeat myself saying that you know this uh, domain to be in science and technology itself is very empowering you know you have that power to change the world so um what i would suggest see future researchers who are coming up is that you know uh, you have you should excel in whatever you are doing um no stream is small or big if the universities are bringing up new courses or streams they are you know they are putting a lot of thoughts so uh, no i don't believe in the saying that you know people saying there is no scope of such and such subject i don't believe that you know you have to find your own uh, identify that opportunity where you can bloom up and you know um uh, i mean that identification of opportunity is really important and um, as everybody is quoting uh, my angel you know i would also like to quote you know uh, and i can sum up this question with that you know um, do the best until you know better and uh, when you know better do better 
yeah so i think it sums us uh, th that questions uh, very well yeah uh, so chaitra anything that uh, you would like to add here okay uh, whatever you choose to do more than 100% because everybody is capable of it and uh, one more thing i would like to stress is please keep your minds open uh, like uh, like when you are doing your uh, bachelor's you might be thinking you would like to do a particular domain and you want to excel in it but during the course of time you might have an inclination towards another subject too so just keep your mind open i'm saying this because it personally happened to me i did my bachelor's in biotechnology keeping in mind i want to yeah. do genetic engineering forensics but during the course i started liking chemistry more i started loving doing experiments seeing what happens uh, so that is when i decided okay if this is what i like i would uh, shift the domain like it is fine like whatever you like it is fine to do it but it should be a well thought decision like mm -hmm. it's not should be a jump in so that is how i decided and i did my pg in chemistry and uh, during the course of time i started liking doing research so i enrolled for phd and i uh, after finishing it uh, here i am in log 9 working in the domain that i love to uh yeah. yeah i would also like to add on to that uh, you know i my post graduation is in uh, chemical forensic science and today i am contributing my uh, contributing my bits to a uh, ev industry you know so that's that's you know applied science is what are yeah. all about so no yeah uh, whatever you uh, are in you just need to excel in that that's my point i mean yeah uh bringing in a log 9 perspective to this right uh, i think we have been able to exactly understand uh, what growth might mean for individuals outside and we have been able to translate this understanding in our own growth philosophy right where we are saying that uh, growth is exponential right and it's all about uh, bringing an additional 1% of the best version you were yesterday and when we are able to do it over a period of one year that number compounds to A, a boiling number that can translate into gazillion efforts and just imagine if we were to do that to a 2 to 3% instead of a 1 so i think the collective effort the summation of doing better every day is what makes a huge difference right and at the same time uh, while you're talking about changing streams in due course uh, till you found your calling i was just thinking of one of my mentors who initially in my career said uh, growth is you know never a linear trajectory because most of us have that notion whenever we say growth we assume that the rock rocket right uh, an arrow with an upward trend but uh, unfortunately growth is like a maze uh, you got to go across come down go up figure out the right path right and that's where your calling lies and uh, at log 9 we do that through our uh, evolve plan uh, we do have e plans where we have conversations uh, with our log 9ers to help them understand the breadth and depth of technology uh, through individual uh, specifications uh, so that they're able to explore experiment and find out what works for them right and like i said and when you do the exponential piece uh, you're all set to go off in the right direction so yeah that's what i wanted to add thanks amulya i think the e plan is a great initiative that we have here because it is very customized to every individual's needs right you have a different growth plan and your objectives or your career path is different from what is there to mine and the e plan is very customized to our needs and it's really great to hear that you know we have this program with this game plan rather not even program this game plan in place which captures or which helps us to capture this non linear uh, trajectory uh, so you know uh next question is to both of you again right and uh, so you have joined us like how you said like a couple of months back and chaitra you've been here with us for about a little more than 2 years right so how does it feel to work here as scientists in the deep tech space like how does it feel to work here at log9 oh uh, yes it's been couple of months now <laughs> so uh you know log9 being a startup it it uh, definitely has some various uh, different sets of uh, expectations the pace the work pace is really really high i keep on saying this every time that it doesn't feel that i have joined couple of months back uh, the pace is so high that uh, yeah so that's one thing and um, so uh, 
some striking features which I find is uh, they, they are very focused on, we are very focused on performance, you know, and uh, if we are excelling, if we are putting our hard work, uh, there's no looking back here. You know, we are being given good rewards uh, in return of it. And um, another thing is the quality of work, of course. Um, uh, that has to be, you know, at par. So yeah, that's my experience, little experience which I have right now. <laughs> And Chaitra, is there anything that you want to add? Okay. Uh, when, uh, when I started off, I was only a very few women in the office initially. But now it's uh, heartening to see so many of us in the office, like wherever I turn around, I can see at least one of us. So it is good to see that. And uh, coming to experience, I would say Log9 is challenging and competitive. And I think it is necessary because when every individual is exposed to that, only then the best comes out of the person. And uh, the competition here is healthy too. And apart from that, as Vernika mentioned, the leadership uh, here is incredible and the team is also equally supportive. And uh, once uh, the opportunities here are again equal to everyone. And when you are in a, such an environment, you are uh, motivated to do your best every day. And still it is not enough. And still you are pushed to give your best. Honestly, for me to just add on uh, what stands out to me is that common purpose of pioneering innovations for a sustainable planet, right? Uh, the very fact that we take pride in being part of a tribe uh, where we are able to unleash our own potentials to the best of our extent, like both of you said, and we grow together because we firmly believe that only if we grow, Log9 grows and it's vice versa. Log9 grows and we grow as well. So each of us come uh, with a co-founding mindset, right? We are just not here as employees, but uh, we are here to solve that ultimate thing that we all have set ourselves for, right? The passion that we all bring in, uh, the agility, the trust to chase some of the high audacious goals, I think that is what just sets apart uh, for me. And uh, for us, uh, like Varnika was mentioning, right? It's uh, performance, meeting the commitments, potential, how are we scaling ourselves up uh, to be able to take on higher challenges and finally the co-founding mindset of ownership. And when potential performance ownership come together with our culture nineisms, I think that's where we define and differentiate the how. Uh, how are we being ethical? How are we being inclusive? Are we asking the questions right directly, right? And are we acting with speed, swiftly as we call it? So our culture nineisms, along with the power of potential performance and ownership, I think is what completely differentiates us. And that's where I enjoy working here. And you know, all of this together with our growth philosophy, the 1% growth that we have, I think that <laughs> that is the that is the magic masala, <laughs> right? And you know, it it also shows that how uh, you know when you do small and continuous imp uh, efforts or improvements rather, it can have such a tangible benefit or uh, such a uh, scalable benefit at the end of it, right? Okay, so now um, you know we've had like questions and answers, and that is just like I want I want to break script a little. I want to change the game. You know, <laughs> and uh, so see, scientists have an aura, right? Uh, and more so with women scientists that, uh, you know, they're always serious all the time and uh, they're very nerdy and they don't know how to have fun rather, right? So uh, let's have a, a round of rapid fire, okay? And uh, I want to just demystify our people here. And uh, we'll start off with like, I'll ask a question so you can just raise your hand and, you know, show off hands. And uh, yeah, but this is a rapid fire round, but there's no hamper at the end of it. <laughs> But uh, we can all go to grab coffee later, maybe. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know? Okay, so my first question to all three of you. Um, have you ever bunked classes? <laughs> wow. Okay, so there's... Okay, maybe even I should raise that. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know... But so uh, it happened during my graduation. There was a very boring class, <laughs> which happened right in the morning. So I had to bunk it <laughs> just to protect my further day ahead. <laughs> So yeah, I bunk classes, yes. And boring class at the beginning of the day is not a good combination Yeah, as but well, right? you know the irony, I ended up, um, uh, my PhD supervisor was of the same subject. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Chaita, something about you. I don't have a count of the number of classes I have bunked, but I can tell that uh, 
like there'll be a list of candidates with the shortage list. So my heart will be beating high to go check if my name has come up or not. <laughs> so yeah, I have bunked. Okay, how about you, Amulya? I would almost be sick uh, Fridays <laughs> to prioritize first day first show movies. So that's that's my story. <laughs> and what about any rules in college? Like, have you broken any rules and got caught? Wow. <laughs> Chaita, let's start off with you this time. Uh, well, uh, in our college days, we were not allowed to get colors inside the campus to celebrate Holi. Uh, but yeah, we did want to play. <laughs> so we got in our colors and uh, we messed up the classroom. So then, uh, yeah, our IDs were confiscated. We had to huh. apologize and take it back. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the max we can do. <laughs> I had a similar story uh, story with the Holi Festival only. Uh, but my supervisor, he logged all our uh, laboratories and we were told to discontinue our studies further. So yeah, then same apolo uh, apologizing story. Yeah. <laughs> I think Log9 has a fascination towards Holi as well, right? Yeah. We all enjoy playing Holi here, you know? Uh, so my next question, have you... Um, failed any subjects or, you know, come very close to failing any subject. <laughs> okay, so Amulya, let's start with Amulya this time. So this was during my uh, MBA days and the subject was supply chain analysis. And uh, I, I probably finished the exam and I knew I won't cut it. So I went to my dean's room and told if I would have an opportunity to apply for a re-exam, or almost, you know, kind of begged to say, please give me a passing mark because I already have a campus offer and I cannot afford to lose it. So I finally stood at a borderline of 34. I think God showered uh, the grace and I, I kind of made it. So yeah, that's, that's it. So something similar happened to me. Uh, this was in my first year and then, you know, business statistics was the subject and uh, for the life of me, I couldn't understand business statistics at all. I understand that part. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, I did not fail. I came very, very close to borderline and then I had to go and beg and say, so I was on the other side of borderline. So it was just like bare minimum and I had to beg and say, Ek mark aur bada do. <laughs> yeah. You know, what about you? Uh, so it happened during my graduation and, you know, uh, you know, those internal examinations. So I remember uh, flunking in that. Uh, so my uh, professor called me saying that, you know, roll number 13, your marks are also 13. <laughs> like that. I can't forget that line ever. And uh, later I had to work really hard to, you know, but yeah, later I topped. I was amongst the topper. <laughs> so yeah, that's good thing. But I flunked. <laughs> I, ha I have also been close to borderline in your internals only. And then for your exams, you're a little bit serious then. Yeah, that is like a waking up call, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Varnika will have a new log nine nickname. Roll oh, number. 13. <laughs> 13, <yeah. laughs> right. Okay, so now there's a, a little bit of a serious question now. Okay, so when you were doing your PhD, okay, how many times did your first research article get rejected? Oh God, <laughs> this might be a serious question, but you know, it's, it touches right on the heart. <laughs> you know, first uh, research paper is definitely tough to get published. For me around, it, it take, took around uh, one and a half year. So you can imagine the number of rejections we had. Like we'll open our mails and we'll see, uh, you know, we regret to inform you that. I just waited for when it'll change to, we will, we are pleased to inform you that. So and so <laughs> articles are published. So it got rejected many times. What about you, Chaitra? Mine too. <laughs> it got around five to six times. Uh, yeah, like the pain is like we submit it and we are eagerly waiting for it. So after 30 days, they send it back. Like it's not accepted. So it is like the 30, dura 30 days duration is again like a lag period for us. Again, sitting, re revising and doing. So it does take, that's only for the first article. I think most of us yeah. do experience yeah. it. Yes. So it's good if they reject it early because at least then you you don't have to wait for a long time like anticipating what is the outcome of the right, paper also, right, right? Right. So yeah. Okay, that was very... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm just listening to both of them and uh, thanking that I did not have to go through this. <laughs> I'm glad I chose to move to an MBA post-engineering <laughs> or maybe the other way around. But right. that seems quite resilience that yeah. 
we need to have as a quality <laughs> no that was actually also very interesting because it gave me a completely different perspective of scientists as well I right think we should get a <laughs> we did it <laughs> so i have a couple of more questions right and uh, one of them is about you know uh, what are the policies that i think this is something that i can ask you amulya what are the some of the policies that we have uh, which uh, helps us to create a psychologically safe workspace uh honestly psychologically safe workplace is all about bringing your true self to work right you don't think twice or hesitate to say hey should i be doing this should i be saying this or can i reach out to this person or there is there going to be some kind of a retaliation so i think if you're able to bring your true honest self to work uh, that's what a psychological safe workplace is and towards that we do have a uh, formal mechanisms in place uh one we definitely talk about a posh committee uh, that we have as an organization if you have any grievances or you need to reach out uh, definitely the doors are open uh, the other is around trainings where we continue to sensitize our people leaders as well as log niners about what's acceptable what's not acceptable right some of those and uh, apart from that uh, we have an open door policy right uh, any one of us can walk in uh, into our founders rooms or our leadership uh folks to ask that question and uh, get your answers apart from that i think what is important is uh, the basis of trust trust is the bedrock of anything that we do uh, towards that one thing that i can definitely think of as our unlimited leave policy right where we have uh, empowered our uh, log niners and our people leaders to take that time off uh, as and when required be it for say a professional reason or a personal reason so it's the trust that we entrust in our people to uh, ensure they're able to do the right things at the right time and be there for their family friends as well as for their own learning so these are just a few to name thanks thanks amulya and uh, you know uh, this 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 next question which i have for the two of you which is can you tell us of a moment when you when the light bulb went off in your head and you thought yes i'm in the right field okay yeah. uh i uh, realized it when i was doing my research so that is when i understood okay these are my skills and i'm good at it so you understand it when you start loving the things that you do so what i understood was okay i love doing experiments i love uh, looking for solutions for problems and uh, that give you gives you a happiness like rather than uh, seeing for day to day happiness it gives you a content that okay i have done it and i'm capable of finding solutions for problems so that is when you understand you are in the right place and you are doing the things that you love and you are equally capable of doing it and you have the skills for it so then you realize okay you are on the right track and uh, you can go ahead with it so during my research days i understood this you know it's um It's actually very. I'm very glad to see that you know even failures can motivate you to you know exactly do better, <laughs> do yeah. better right? And it's not about giving up, you know. Uh, so you know the next question, maybe Varnika, you can take this up. Is uh, what is the best and the worst part of being a, uh, you know, being in the deep tech space as an R and D scientist? Um. Okay. So I believe uh, with every challenge comes an opportunity to shine. Okay. So the best part about R and D is. that itself you know you have the opportunity to outshine and prove the world that you are the only person capable of solving a problem mm -hmm. and you know that's itself is very empowering um and rewards we all like rewards so you know appreciation is equally important so yeah that's the best part and the worst part is that you know you have a problem you 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 got you are kind of stuck to that problem you have no choice but to see that problem only you have a deadline coming <laughs> there is there are still no results uh so that's the not worst but less likable part maybe and also when uh, you know when you don't have answers but you still have to start all over again yeah <laughs> exactly yeah that's we have no choice but to start all over again <laughs> yeah Okay so I think uh, we have like one more last question and uh, this is something that I would like to hear from all three of you and uh, maybe we can start off with you Chaitra uh, so you know taking you back 2 years right what drew you to log9 and why did you opt to join this organization uh as i mentioned my uh, phd was uh, in exploring materials for energy storage 
so during our research the maximum that we are been doing is only in the laboratory scale and we'll be publishing papers but uh, i think everybody will agree every researcher wants to see their ideas as a product so i wanted to get into an industries where i can uh, learn mm. and also put in some of my skills and see if i can get out a product out of my learnings because that should finally whatever you have learned should not just lie down as a paper it should benefit for the society for the mankind so then i started looking for uh, companies where i can uh, get in like the core should be energy so that is when i came across log9 materials where they are working on nano materials and on energy storage devices so that is uh, the only reason why i wanted to get into log9 after getting to log9 i have like whatever i have learned in my phd i think i have learned more than that during this course of time addressing more problems and also seeing in the terms of an uh, not just like in the industry how it works that exposure is there so that is the reason i joined log9 and uh, apart from that uh, yeah the things that i like in log9 is flexible timings <laughs> and i think it also helps that uh, you are also working in a field which you really love true right so that also helps to uh, motivate you every day and bring like how amulya said like, bring your best self to work every day yeah. right so when we get an opportunity to do the things that you love from within the results will be wonderful Yeah, because this is uh, inspiration which is coming from within. It's not an external factor, Course, yeah, you know. True. And uh, what about you, Varnika? Like, what made you join us here? Okay, <clears throat> so I have two reasons basically. Um, uh, my decision was definitely very well, uh, well, you know, informed. I wanted to join, and I was very extremely happy to be a part of it. So, first reason is. Um, that i as i mentioned that i have been working in uh, graphene technologies now so you know here at log9 i was given an opportunity where my experience would come into count which will eventually be such an impact on the environment and climate you know so i literally jumped into this opportunity one was that reason and another is a personal reason that i also aligns with align with the company's vision of you know um, pioneering responsible energy and uh, I so wanted to be a part of it, yeah. Okay, I think uh, for me it's been uh, personal as well as professional. Uh, as as a child, I grew up across the length and breadth of the country, and I have had the privilege uh, to understand what abundance is and what depletion is, right? Having experienced that uh, from during my teens as well, I've been in forums where we talked about save trees, hug trees, and all of that stuff, right? Uh, going to conferences, giving papers, which probably never made it to uh, the light of the day, uh, talking to governments, and not really going anywhere. So uh, I think uh, when Log Nine came my way, this was like that opportunity where my passion for people. and sustainability came together and that was uh, that one point i said okay let's let's do that and to add up it was a startup and i was definitely wanting to experience that after working with uh, larger mncs through my stint so far uh and on the sustainability part um, i think all of us or most of my colleagues here as well use the two wheeler electric scooters we have on campus and the best part is it's powered by our own batteries right that makes it even more interesting when you see it happening on the ground i think uh, sustainability is also a way of life right we walk the talk in terms of uh, being conscious when you're picking up a paper cup to say hey do we want to do this or hitting that print button uh, in our laptops or as simple as when we're walking out all of us go back and see hey do we need to switch off the ac where is the remote or switch off the lights so i think this is a conscious uh, way of living uh, the way sustainability has become a mindset uh, has what has been uh, the calling for me when it came to log 9 and uh, the other part is about innovations i think as people when i'm working with log 9ers here Uh, the passion we have the zeal we have to create the me- next best innovative technology uh, in india for india and the world is is just exciting so that that tops it for me in india for the world <laughs> you know that's a catch phrase we should use that in our next merchandise <laughs> you know <laughs> but thank you you know uh, varnika and amulya for bringing this up because log9 is truly out there to make a difference 
and uh, you know our two wheeler battery packs have an uh, save an additional 64% of carbon dioxide emissions over their lithium ion competitors right and uh, to our audience who wants to know more about our efforts on sustainability we have an upcoming episode where we focus where we talk about all the efforts that we do on sustainability and you can learn more about that uh, thank you amulya chaitra varnika for joining us here today and having this incredible conversation you know and thank you to the viewers as well who have joined in today to talk, you know to know more about women in stem we have a ton of exciting opportunities here at log9 including scientist roles in cathode materials battery materials we also have roles in embedded hardware and self fabrication also and if you're excited and you know if you think that this is the right profile for you we encourage you to log in to www.log9materials.com/careers and submit your profiles catch you next time in our next episode